The board will now come to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Tyus, Alderwoman Flowers, Alderman Bosley, Alderman Moore, Alderwoman Hubbard, Alderwoman Ingracia, Alderman Coulter, Alderman Conway, Alderman Ortman, Alderman Vollmer, Alderman Villa, Alderman Arnowitz, Alderwoman Murphy, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Green, Alderwoman Berenger, Alderman Rohde, Alderman Kennedy, Alderwoman Davis, Alderwoman Spencer, Alderman French, Alderman Boyd, Alderman Vaccaro, Alderman Ogilvy, Alderman Cohn, Alderman Williamson, Alderman Carter, Alderman Crewson, President Reed. Here. Alderman Tights, Alderman Moore, Alderman Hubbard, Alderman Ingracia, Alderman Ortman, Alderman Arnowitz, Alderman Murphy, Alderman Howard, Alderman Berenger, Alderman Kennedy, Alderman Davis, Alderman French, Alderman Ogilvy, Alderman Cohn, Alderman Carter, Alderman Crewson, 18 present. Quorum being present, I'll ask everyone in the chambers and galleries to first join me in a moment of silence at the request of Alderman Villa for Mr. Marty Walsh. I know a lot of you probably knew Marty personally. Um, he was a graduate of CBC and a graduate of Washington University where he received his master's degree in civil engineering. He served his country in, as a first lieutenant in the Army Corps of Engineers, and he was a former building commissioner for the city of St. Louis. So please join me in a moment of silence for Mr. Marty Walsh. Given all honor to God, almighty God, source of all authority, we humbly ask guidance in our deliberations and wisdom in our conclusions. Amen. Introduction of honor guests. Any introduction of honor guests? Alderman from the 26th. Yes, Mr. President, members of the board, I'd like to have as my honor guest today the former comptroller resident of the 26th War of Vervis Jones and Ms. Robinson from Amien UE. Thank you. Alderman from the 12th. Alderman from the 16th. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I would like to have as my special guest today, Anthony Lencia of the AGC of Missouri. Any further introductions? Any further introductions? Alderman from the 9th. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I'd like to have for my honored guest, Martina Johnson from the St. Louis Association of Realtors. Any further introductions? Any further introductions? We also have with us today Mr. Uh, Cedric Walker from Cedric, would you please stand? He's the CEO of Universal Soul Circus. I know a lot of you have been out to Universal Soul Circus and saw, you know, that that circus is incredible. So, Gary, thank you so thank you so much for joining us today, Cedric. And I was jumping to Gary Boyd because I saw him there. Gary, could you please stand? Everybody knows Gary. Gary's a TV personality. He does Them Your People. He's also uh, helped with the Martin Luther King celebration for years. Let's give Gary a round of applause. Thank you for joining us today, Gary. <laughs> Alderman from the 10th, like to wrap us up. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Today is June 3rd. As you probably all know, it's National Donut Day. 
which probably explains the absence of the alderman from the 23rd. Thank you. <laughs> alderman from the 20, from 22nd. Mr. President, members of the board, I'd like to have my honor guest, Mr. Chris Pickle with AT&T. All right, thank you, Chris. Oh. We also have uh, Nikki with us. Nikki is uh, interning with Dave Sweeney. Nikki, could you please stand? Thanks, Nikki, for coming today. Alderman for the 18th, you recognize on approval of the minutes. Alderman for the 18th, it's recognized on approval of the minutes. Mr. Clerk, Ms. Clerk, Mr. Clerk, could you please, the Alderman from the 18th, for approval in minutes. What? He's right. Alderman from the 8th, you recognize on approval in minutes. Approval of the minutes of the May 20th meeting. Moved by the Alderman from the 8th, entertain a second on that motion. Seconded by the Alderman from the 12th. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Report of city officials. Report of city officials can be found in sections A, B, and C of the agenda and have been pa placed in all Alderman's mailboxes. I have from His Honor the Mayor the following correspondence. Dear members of the board, I have the pleasure to submit the following individuals for appointment to the Zoological Sub-District Commission, the reappointment of Carol A. Wilson, who resides in the 16th Ward and whose term will expire on December 31st, 2019. I respectfully request your approval of this appointment. Sincerely, Francis G. Slay, Mayor City of St. Louis. All in one from the 28th, you recognize on the Mayor's appointment to the Zoological Sub-District -Sub Commission. Zoological District. Yeah. Thank you, you, Mr. You want to make the motion for the for the to approve the mayor's appointment to the Zoological Subdistrict Commission. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to confirm the mayor's appointment of Carol Wilson to the Zoological Subdistrict Commission. It's been moved by the Alderman from the 28th. Entertain a second on that motion. Seconded by the Alderman from the 23rd. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Polls, motion carries. Dear members of the board, I have the pleasure to submit the following individuals for appointment to the Mental Health Fund Board of Trustees. The appointment of Jennifer Matthew, who resides in the 16th Ward, whose term will expire on December 31st, 2018. The appointment of Donna Schmidt, Schmidt, who resides in the 16th Ward and whose term will expire on December 31st, 2018. I respectfully request your approval of this appointment. Sincerely, Francis G. Slay, Mayor, City of St. Louis. All along from the second, you recognize on mayor's appointment to the Mental Health Fund Board of Trustees. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I'd like to move for approval of the uh, appointments to the Mental Health Fund Board of Trustees. Been moved by the all along from the second. Entertain a second on the motion. Seconded by the all along from the 13th. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed. Motion carries. That's the extent of report of city officials. We dispense with line item seven and eight. Would anyone like to take any bills off of any of our informal calendars? Would anyone like to take any bills off of any of our informal calendars? Alderman from the 26th. Yes, Mr. President. I'd like to take uh, board bill 65, remove it from the perfection calendar, and put it on the informal calendar. All right, Madam Clerk, please move board bill number 65 from the regular from the perfection calendar to the informal calendar. So noted. All right. We will dispense with line items 8 through 10, first reading board bills. Board bill 69, sponsored by Alderwoman Spencer and Arnest, amending the revised code, amending sections 26.08.348 and adding a new section 
titled City of St. Louis Short-Term Lending Code pertaining to the regulation of short-term loan establishments as defined herein. Board Bill 70, sponsored by Alderwoman Spencer and Ordinance Calling and providing for the holding of an election on November the 8th, 2016 for the purpose of submitted to the qualified voters the question of charging a fee for the issuance of a permit for the operation of a short-term loan establishment. That's the extent of our first reading. Madam Clerk, please assign Board Bill 69 and 70 to public safety. So noted. Reference to committee. To the Public Safety Committee, Board Bills 69 and 70. That's the extent of reference to committee. Second reading. Following Board Bill where it was reported out of the Ways and Means Committee, Board Bill 57 as amended, sponsored by President Reed, an ordinance calling for the holding of an election on November the 8, 2016, for the purpose of submitting to the qualified electors a proposal to levy and collect a property tax of five cents per each $100 of assessed valuation for the purpose of providing providing services to persons aged 60 or older. The following board bills were reported out of the Streets Committee. Board Bill 30 as amended, sponsored by Alderman Kotar, an ordinance pertaining to vendors on the wharf, repealing ordinance 61362 and enacting in lieu a new ordinance establishing the process Have some order. for soliciting vendors for said area, establishing a wharf vending district, and establishing a riverfront vending district committee. Board Bill 41 as amended, sponsored by President sponsored by Alderman Villa, and on as recommended by the Board of Public Service to conditionally vacate travel on a northern 120 foot, 128 foot section of the north-south alley in City Block 3210 is bounded by Davis, Michigan, Herc, and Virginia. Board Bill 55, sponsored by Alderman Bosley and Alderman Carter, and on as recommended by the Parking Commission, making appropriation for payment of the operating expenses, capital equipment, and improvement expenses, including lease purchase agreements involving the parking division asset, debt service expenses of the parking division of the Treasurer's Office, Keel, Keel and City, City Hall Parking, Information Technologies Office, Argyle Parking, Shoto Building, Parking, and parking, Williams Paper Parking, Central Downtown Parking, Buckingham Parking, Couples Parking, and Justice Parking for the fiscal year beginning July the 1st, 2016 and ending June the 30th, 2017, amounting in the aggregate to the sum of $16,679,750 and containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 64, sponsored by Alderwoman Davis and Ordinance, recommended by the Board of Public Service to conditionally vacate travel on the 17th Street to Washington to St. Charles Street. That's the extent of our second readings. We dispense with line item 14, perfection consent. Board Bill 40, sponsored by I can't, I can't. Board Bill 40, sponsored by Alderwoman Spencer, Alderman and Alderwomen Spencer, Cruson, Vaccaro, Ogilvy, Howard, Carter, Green, Williamson, Ortman, and Cone, and earnest pertaining to drug-related overdoses and medical assistance, immunity from prosecution for possession or control and containing definitions and an emergency clause. Board Bill 35, committee substitute, sponsored by Alderwoman Hubbard and Alderwoman Davis, and on its approving a redevelopment plan for 1600 through 1742 Washington Avenue. Board Bill 45, sponsored by Alderwoman Davis and Alderman Bosley, and on its amending ordinance 69450 by modifying the term of the real estate tax abatement for the Shepherd Apartments redevelopment area. Board Bill 11, sponsored by Alderman Kotar and honors recommended by the Planning Commission to change the zoning of property as indicated on the district map and in, in multiple city blocks from B, two-family dwelling district to D, multiple family dwelling district, J, industrial district, and K, unrestricted district to the I, central business district and containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 32, sponsored by Alderman Davis 
and on us approving the petition of owners of certain real property to establish a community improvement district, establishing the Grand Center Area 2 Community Improvement District and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 51 as amended, sponsored by Alderman Rohde in ordinance, approving to the petition to establish the 4101 Laclee Community Improvement District. That's the extent of perfection consent. All one from the first. Mem Mr. President, members of the board, I, I had requested already that Board Bill 40 be taken off the perfection. Which one? I'm consent calendar 40 and uh, put on the regular calendar. Madam Clerk, please make note of that. Board Bill 40 from the perfection consent to the regular perfection calendar. So noted. All right. Uh, Alderman from the 18th, you recognize on the motion for the perfection consent calendar. Mr. President, members of the board, I move for adoption of the perfection consent calendar. Moved by the Alderman from the 18th, seconded by the Alderman from the 12th. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Pose. Motion carries. Dispense with line up. Board bills for perfection. Board bill 40. Sponsored by Aldermen and all the women, Spencer Cruson, Vaccaro, Ogilvy, Howard, Carter, Green, Williamson, Ortman, and Cone. An ordinance pertaining to drug related overdoses and medical assistance, immunity from prosecution for possession or control, and containing definitions and an emergency clause. All the one, all the one from the 20th, you recognize on the Perfection of Board Bill Number 40. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move uh, for protect, uh, perfection of Board Bill Number 40. Moved by the all in front of the 20th. Entertain a second on the motion. Seconded by the all in front of the 13th. Any discussion? Uh, all the one from the first. Mr. President, <clears throat> sorry. Mr. President, members of the board, I, I, I request that the all one from the 20th yield. All the one from the 20th, will you yield for questions to the all one from the first? Yes. All the one from the first, please proceed. Thank you. Um, Alderwoman, I was trying to figure out what is the definition of a person who seeks or obtains emergency medical assistance. So would that be somebody who's actually at the hospital or what is seeking or uh, I understand what obtaining medical uh, emergency <coughs> medical assistance is, but what is the seeking part? That's what I'm trying to understand. <coughs> uh, the seeking would be calling for emergency services at 911, calling for EMS, uh, calling for uh, any, anybody that would help somebody in an official capacity to come and, and assist in a medical emergency overdose. Okay, so um, if a police came up on this and they weren't in, hadn't actually started to do it, then that person would not be covered. They, <clears throat> there would be a little bit of um, uh, discretion on the part of the police officers if, if they legitimately had called 911 or sought medical assistance, but no, generally speaking, no. If they just, if they were, for example, uh, arresting somebody for drug possession, the idea that they could claim that they were experiencing a medical emergency drug overdose would not, would not fly. Okay, so they had to be, have actively they had to been be, doing you know, something. They had to be making the call, actually calling for help, and summonsing emergency and police to the medical emergency. Okay, and also, um, it's, um, Page one, line 17 says the police officer has a choice between reporting a city ordinance violation or a state level ordinance. The police officer may choose the city level offense at his or her discretion. Is it our, is it your, uh, are you seeking that they do seek to do the uh, city ordinance rather than the state? That's correct. So with this ordinance, we, uh, as the employers of the police department, are instructing our police officers um, as their employer what we want them to be doing, and that is uh, to be using the city ordinance. That's correct. Uh, so I guess I was, I see where it says it could, but I don't see, and maybe I'm missing it, where it says we are requesting that they do it. It is, it, that is the request, and it is worded as such. So um, we cannot mandate that they do that. But oh, we, I know, yes, I know. But we can, as their employers, um, you know, state where, where we want them to take it. Okay, and the, um, so the emergency medical assistance would uh, cover controlled substances under certain sections, distribution, so. Not distribution, Distribution no. of distribution, marijuana. No. Uh, no, let's see. It says number three on page, uh, 
Um, on line 19, page 2 of 14, possession, distribution, control, or attempted distribution of a marijuana under 11.60.310. So this would only pertain to very, very small, small amounts. Small amounts, okay. For personal use, that's correct. Okay, and the same thing of, of any controlled substance. So if it's something that's very small, very small. and it shows that you're not trying to be distributing it. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, but if you were sharing it with a friend or something like that, if you're 20 and you... Yes, yeah. so I mean, it's for very, out, it's right. for very small right. amounts. And again, right. the, like, the police department does have the discretion to, um, to understand your, the amount that you're possessing to be, uh, you know, if you are a drug dealer, for example, then the, you're, this, would, this would not apply. So when I was a public defender, like if somebody, for lack of a better word, had a dime and they were selling uh, like ten dollars to something of cocaine which would be nothing or marijuana then that even though that could be counted as distribution they would be forgiven under this and, and so long as they're seeking um, some kind of help. O only for the uh, person seeking the medical assistance for the overdose, overdose victim that's correct. Okay but but the distribution is in there for a reason and that's what I'm trying to get at why are we using the word distribution. Right, sure. yeah. Yes. Um, I have no further questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Alderman from the fourth. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. I rise in total opposition of this bill, and it's because of it's a, it's a bill that's a bit too late. And I know we try to correct things, but I feel that this bill was enacted because of the emergency of the, the overuse on the south side when the white kids got involved. That's when this bill got enacted. We've, we've gone to jail, we've died and overdosed, and I don't like the idea of the immunity from prosecution. I think that we are relaxing the laws too much and there's no, uh, how would we say, there's no consequences to the bad behavior. And I think this takes out the bad behavior. It's telling me that I can use heroin or whatever and overdose and, and I'm going to get straightened out. They're going to save my life. And then I don't have it. I'm, I'm immune from, from uh, prosecution or from the courts. So I think it's a bad bill. I think we could do other things, but we need to have consequences for bad behavior. And, I, and that's why I'm, I rise in opposition to this bill. All right, thank you, Alderman. Any further discussion? Any further? Alderman from the 21st. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as I mentioned when this bill came in front of committee, I, I understand the intention, and I know that the intentions are, uh, are good. They're well-intentioned, the sponsors of this bill and the folks who support it. Uh, what I was concerned about, and uh, the testimony of the circuit attorney's office and the supporters of this bill kind of back this up in the committee. Uh, what I'm concerned about is that we're providing a mechanism now for people to be treated differently for the same crime in the city of St. Louis. And so now officers, if we pass this, have the discretion that for some individuals they will use the state statute and for other individuals, they will use the local ordinance. Um, and what I am concerned about, as we have seen uh, with the discretion of individual officers sometimes, is that certain people are treated differently than others. And what I'm concerned is that we're going to set up a situation where white kids uh, from St. Charles who come to St. Louis City to buy their drugs and use their drugs uh, are going to be slapped on the wrist saying that this is just something that kids do, it shouldn't destroy their lives, let's give the officer an option to do the local ordinance and let the kid go on about his business. While uh, young people from my community uh, will very likely be charged under the state statute and the officer very likely will not give them uh, the benefit of the doubt and not charge them under this new local ordinance. Uh, as it is right now, it will be completely against up to the officer decide if they go the state route, the local ordinance route, or if it's a case of a youngster, the juvenile route. And what I think is that we're adding confusion to the system. 
And, uh, and I understand, again, why we're doing this. In fact, we, this shouldn't be uh, on us at all. This should be done at the state level. Uh, so there's one set of rules for everybody in the state, regardless of county, regardless of the mood of the individual police officer that day. But the state has not acted. And so once again, we find ourselves having to do the state's job. And um, the fact is, though, that we don't have the authority to, with an ordinance, um, supersede a state statute. And state statutes regulate these, uh, these, these crimes right now. And so what we're hoping is that a, uh, an officer will know about this ordinance and then at his or her discretion, um, use it accordingly. And again, I just think that we're setting up an unfair system and a lot of things are very often done uh, with, with good intentions, only to come back a few years later and realize that they are being selectively enforced uh, and that certain groups are being penalized much harsher than others. So I think it is something to consider uh, as we vote on this today. Um, I voted present at the uh, committee level and I'll probably do the same today. Um, I understand the intention and it is possible that this can uh, help certain individuals. Um, but I'm also pretty sure that this will not be a courtesy extended to everyone and that there will be a system where people are treated differently uh, in the city of St. Louis for the same exact crime and that concerns me. Any further discussion? Any further? All the one from the, f <laughs> All the one from the 15th. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I rise in opposition, or I rise in support of this bill. Um, it has a bit of a personal meaning to me. Um, back in 2005, um, shortly after I moved to St. Louis, I um, received a phone call that one of my best friends from childhood had um, overdosed on heroin. And he was left um, in a building by himself because his friends were afraid of prosecution. And it wasn't for many hours until they finally came forth and um, went to his parents instead of going to the police to tell them what had happened. Laws like this can save lives. And I understand that many feel like it's too little too late and I understand that there's a lot of discretion um, that can be given to the officers and I think, you know, sometimes we have to not have the perfect be the you know enemy of the good and if there's any un unintended you know consequences of this i'm sure that many of us would be willing to come together and address those unintended consequences in the future um, but to give a mechanism for people to feel like they can come forward if there is a medical emergency um, i think it is you know something that we have to be doing in this city uh, it's a life and death um, matter for many folks and so I applaud the woman uh, the older woman from the 20th for bringing this forward and I fully support these efforts all the one from the first Mr. president members of the board I had questions because I am pulled um, as a former public defender I love laws like this okay you need them um, we needed them many many years ago that uh, three strikes and you're out has always been ridiculous okay and it's a lot of young black men that are in prison and locked up for life sentences about small amounts of drugs and a lot of them um, needed help not locking up when uh, before i left here i was the chair of uh, public safety and i actually took opened up the workhouse and we took the press into the workhouse about the concerns I had about how people were being treated and the fact that we brought uh, Dora Shapiro in and gave her a $15,000 raise overnight over the woman who had been running it. Um, so there were a lot of concerns that continued to be. In fact, my last conversation I had with Alderman Carter before he passed was he called me asking for the report that I had done back then because he was then working on some of the same issues that I had been working on 10 years ago. So the public defender in me, the attorney that says that the fairness, I like this. I'm also uh, aware of what the Alderman from the 21st talks about, about the unfair impact. Um, 
And so that pulls at me. But unfortunately, I want to say the officers already have the discretion to do that. And I've seen that happen over the years. I started out my career as an attorney with the uh, public defenders, but I was in juvenile. And so many times our clients were young black men and the young white men would be brought down there and then their parents would be called and then they would go home. And this has happened over and over and over again. Um, my colleague, David Stokely, who's now passed on and I, um, this was in the 80s, we started to raise so much heck about this stuff that they went from having one lawyer to five lawyers down there because we were, we were uh, trying every case, we were raising heck about it. Um, it still doesn't take away from what a good start this is. This is. My concern is about the distribution more so than the, the impact, because the impact is going to be there until we start being truthful about things, okay? It's going to be there. The officers oftentimes will not uh, charge people and just take them home. And they already right now can charge you under the state or the local. So they've alre they already had that. Um, I think, and I'm just thinking about this as I go on, I think I'm going to come on the side of, I'm going to vote for this. But that don't mean that I don't understand that it's not fair. And as we change the drug laws, and, and we are doing that, and we should have done that a long time ago, um, then we also need to open up our jails and let these people out that have been locked up. We can empty most of the jails. We should also be looking at these for-profit prisons that uh, make a lot of money off of people, okay? We also should be looking at our own system where we used to have that, uh, uh, Ollie Stewart, your committee woman, used to every Christmas call me up and I want to take stuff into the jails and then right. was told now she can't deliver stuff to the prisoners there for free. That's ridiculous because we set it up for a profit system, okay? It's ridiculous. So I told her I'm, I'm committing to her right now because Ollie is in her 80s and she has fought the good battle that I will pick this up and I will start taking stuff over to the jails because I think that's ridiculous that we don't allow an 80 year old woman who goes over there and collects all of this stuff and then now we're telling her no because we've set it up with a contract where people can make money. For years I hated it as a public defender that when the client tried to call his parents they would make them have to pay so much money. So if you have somebody locked up who's not been found guilty right now you have to pay so much money or they have to call collect. This is all a ruse for people to make money. So while we're looking at these things, I think we need to look, we need to have something that says you cannot prevent people from donating stuff to prisoners. You cannot have contracts that make them have to use these expensive telephones because many of the people are waiting trial. They're not guilty. And even if they are guilty, why would their parents have to pay that kind of money um, because somebody has cut a deal to have a contract. These are all things that I know that we need to be looking at that are very unfair, but it really is a good thing. We want to encourage people um, to uh, report that there is a problem and that I am a drug addict and I'm trying to seek help. But what I want to say to people is this, is that when you see your next door neighbor, you think that they are the child next door, also know that my next door neighbor, and I live in a predominantly African American, community is the child next door. And if you have that same heartfelt that you want them to be protected, protect my children too. And I hear the alderman from the 21st and the 4th because our children get murdered and half of the people don't care, they get shot down. Right now we have a situation of uh, a tape, just like in Chicago, that has not been brought to the forefront for four years. And people called me and said, where is the outrage? Why aren't we marching in the streets like Chicago? There is outrage. It's just so much indifference and unfairness sometimes that it's just hard not to feel that, what, why should we be looking out for you because you don't look out for uh, us. But in this case, I really do think it's a good bill um, and so I'm going to support it. But I think that if we're going to do this, we got to look at a bigger picture and not just look at this little group of people that we're trying to protect. All right, thank you. All the one from the 19th. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I'm still confused as of this moment. And the only reason is because, and I share this with you all all the time when I feel like we're just doing frivolous bills. When you have state statutes that supersede you on any given day, what's the purpose of this? My next question is, uh, to myself, is, um, can I be guaranteed that it's, this is going to be equally distributed in my community? 
None of us can guarantee that. And then when I think about all the young people that I have assisted one way or another through the years, they're better off to take their chances with a good representation, the community supporting them, and a damn good attorney, and or knowing and understanding all the resources that are out here to bring them to a good conclusion. And we have a lot of that right now. And we have more of this being established as we speak. And so, do we need this? It's a good field move. I like it. I like it. It's a, it's a good field move. But is it really going to benefit uh, this community in its totality? And so that's my question to myself. That is why I'm still going to be sitting here pondering for the next few minutes uh, to try to come to a great conclusion one way or the other. But I, I know that I'm leaning toward, is this necessary? So I just wanted to share that. All right, thank you. All the one from the 20th. Uh, thank you, then Mr. I have the, the, do you have something in the interim, or you want to wait for me, for you to close? I can wait to close. Okay, all right. Alderman from the 8th. Good morning, Mr. President. I'll agree with the Alderman from the 21st. Um, he's absolutely correct. I mean, this does not really have legal authority. The circuit attorney is um, in real Relax for a second, everyone. Um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have a legal authority over them because the laws come from the state. The problem is we do see too many young people watch their friends die. And my, my cousin's daughter died this exact same way. And her boyfriend walked out and left her to die for 30 or 42 hours when she didn't answer the phone. And I look at the young people today and I'm thinking, Okay, you know, they're worried about 30 days in jail, six months in jail, and they're going to let somebody die. I mean, it is hard for me to conceptualize, but when they're on drugs or they're high or whatever, they don't have right thinking going. But I think as a community, yeah, we don't have the force of law here, but as a community, I think it is an important message to let these people know that no matter how scared, how panicked, how stoned, whatever else you're doing wrong, the number one priority is human life. And yes, yeah, so we don't carry the, the weight of law. Um, the police officers have to do what they have to do. Um, but I, I think it does send an important message because it is happening. And you know, heroin, when I was in high school, was like a big deal. And I think it was, you know, can't even remember which one, Steppenwolf, the needle and the damage done, somebody like that. You know, it was always posters with needles. Well, now they're taking heroin in all kinds of other different fashions today. I was always afraid of needles, so I was pretty safe all the way along the way. But they have other ways to, to take the drugs, smoke them, or eat them, or whatever, so they don't have to poke it in their arms or whatever. And there's synthetic drugs out there, and these things are some serious, serious things. And, you know, I, I get to kind of see it a little bit firsthand because. All my brothers and sisters are my same age. We all have children between 14 and 28, and we get all of these stories, and, and they're a tragedy for, for the, the child that has passed away and their family. But I think it is important for us as a community to send a message that you know, we're not going to support, we don't think it's right to prosecute you. Now, I mean, if you, know, if you did something else, well, yeah. But I don't care, you should, you spending six months in jail is a lot better than that guy spending the rest of his life six feet underground. And we have to send a message that that's not what we're trying to do is go after you. I know it's wrong, it's gonna impact your life and we've all seen the devastation of alcohol and drugs on all of these families, on our neighborhoods. I mean, crack cocaine for those of you who were around 20 years ago I thought was the most devastating thing I'd ever seen. I'm not, I don't know that people died from crack cocaine um, back then, but boy, they were doing a lot of it, and we had a lot of crime directly associated with the, the people trying to do it. The bottom line is human beings shouldn't sit there, worry about whether or not they're going to be incarcerated while they watch someone else die. And I think it is an important public policy that we say that we support this, we understand what the alderman from the 21st says,
but that in, in policy and in principle, um, we support this because we want them to call 911. We want them, it'll be your child, your nephew, your niece. Make sure that people make the right decision. And sometimes you have to make a decision to make that call that might be bad for you also, but six months or six years is a lot less than the rest of your life underground. Thank you. All the way in front of the 21st. Yes, uh, will the sponsor yield to the questions? All the way in front of the 20th. Will you yield to the all the way in front of the 21st? I will. All the way in front of the 21st, please proceed. Thank you. Good morning. I, again, I want to say that um, I understand the intention. And we all, I think, would support uh, this smart legislation being passed at the state level. And it applies to every county in the state and everyone equally. Uh, what I am concerned, though, is that we are adding confusion to the situation. So uh, if we pass this, if an officer arrives at a scene and uh, his judgment or her judgment is that uh, an arrest should be made in that case, um, is he acting in violation of this new ordinance? It is my understanding that the officer would not be acting in violation of the ordinance. Okay. So in other words, if an officer arrives to a scene and determines that the, the amount is such that this is not for personal use, they are drug dealing, they, are, they, are, uh, they have guns, for example, they have a warrant out for their arrest, These, this, this ordinance does not provide immunity for any of those things. If, if the officer arrives, and even if you are calling 911 and you have a warrant out for your arrest, or you, have a, you are illegally possessing a firearms, this is still the officer it, the responsibility would be to arrest you for those other offenses. Okay, but if the officer arrived on the scene and chose to make an arrest under section 11.60, <clears throat> which is what we are providing immunity for, uh, would they be violating our ordinance? No, it's my understanding that they would not. Okay. Um, well, let me draw your attention to page two, uh, line 10. So the way that this is written, the immunity clause there, it clearly states that a person who in good faith uh, seeks to obtain emergency medical assistance, dot, 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 you can see line 10, shall not be arrested. Shall not be arrested, shall not be charged, shall not be prosecuted, shall not be convicted, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So if an officer used his discretion or her discretion and decided to make an arrest under existing law, under existing state law, he or she would be violating this ordinance which says that he shall not make an arrest. It's my understanding that there is some legal wiggle room there. Um, and so because of that, we then direct the arresting officer to apply municipal, municipal violations rather than state. And then it, it would then at that point go to the circuit attorney's office, at which point the circuit attorney's office has uh, uh, provided that they would uh, drop the charges. Mm -hmm. Given that it's a very small amount and the other, extenu the other circumstances do not exist. For example, there is no evidence of, uh, of distribution in large amounts. There is no other ex uh, warrants out and there are no um, other illegal activities going on, for example, the possession of illegal firearms. One of the issues that really came up in committee was whether or not we would be letting drug dealers and drug busts off. Absolutely not. Under no circumstance would, if a police officer was deployed to a house and is determined that there are drugs in the house, you, you know, in those cases, and we have drug busts in my ward on a very weekly, on a re regular basis, more than one a week, and in those cases you find large amounts, multiple types of drugs, illegal firearms, and there are often, and almost always, warrants out for the arrest of the suspects involved in those cases. This would not pertain to those cases in any way, shape, or form. Okay. So there is a legal difference between shall and may, as you are know. And so I think uh, that if it said may not, then that would, um, that would then give some leniency and some discretion to the officer. But I think by including shall not uh, be arrested 
what we're doing is saying that if an officer does what they do right now, which is make an arrest under existing state statute, that we have put them where they are violating, we're creating a situation where they are violating a city ordinance. The, the other thing I would like to ask you, though. To, 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 to address that, however, I think your point earlier was that there is too much discretion in the bill. And now it seems like we are criticizing the lack of discretion or the direction or the forceful direction of the bill. And so I think what we tried to no, do. No, what I'm saying is that there really um, isn't. There's like a false premise of discretion because state statute is clear, and what we're doing is just adding confusion. So now, if with with these wording, we are putting an officer in violation of the of, of uh, the city ordinance I don't for think following. We are. Well, what State we're statute. doing as the police officer's employer is directing the police department and the officer themselves as to what we, the city of St. Louis, their employer, wants them to do in certain circumstances, in the circumstances under which a person is experiencing a medical emergency due, due to a drug overdose. For the, for the person assisting and seeking medical assistance, we are directing the officer not to make an arrest yeah. in the situation that the only thing going on is a small is is a, is, a, yeah. is drug possession of a small amount for personal use. Yeah, but we can, as a uh, as a municipal body, we can't direct officers uh, in, in contradiction of state law. So, for instance, you're correct. For instance, that's it, correct. Let me give you an example. It might be well intentioned for us to say, if an officer arrives at a domestic violence scene, and uh, the woman has shot and killed her husband, who was in the process of beating her, we should say, she, she shall not be arrested. We can pass an ordinance to say that. Mm -hmm. But homicide laws in the state of Missouri supersede that. That's so correct. So I think we are in a similar case here, is that we can say specifically that an officer shall or shall not do something. Um, but state statute really supersedes all that. And, but this is my point, this is where I'm going with this, is that immunity only works if it's guaranteed, okay? So immunity only works if I know that I am going to call and put myself in, in, at risk of being arrested, but I know there's immunity, so I'm comfortable doing it. If there is any uh, confusion about that, or if I'm taking a chance depending on what officer shows up, uh, how this officer wants to play it out, that doesn't really have the desired effect of making pe people feel safe and secure, that it is a risk-free decision um, to call 911 in those cases. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. And actually, I think this is a good opportunity to reset the tone of what our discussion is here. The point of this bill is to remove the stigma, to remove the danger and the risk of being arrested when it comes to making the decision as to whether or not to seek medical assistance in the case of a medical emergency drug overdose. We are attempting to remove as much of the stigma and the risk of arrest as we possibly can in this body because it is incumbent upon us to recognize that in the city of St. Louis we have a heroin epidemic. We had 133 overdose victims die last year in the city of St. Louis alone. And it is incumbent upon us to do as much as we can as a legislative body to encourage and facilitate the medical assistance in the event of a medical emergency drug overdose. And that is what we're trying to do here, is remove the risk and the stigma of calling 911 when somebody you are with is experiencing an overdose. So let me ask you, does this remove the risk? It does not remove the entire risk. What it does is it does as much as we can in this body to remove that risk. And that is what it is incumbent upon us to do. Okay. Um, no, no, no further questions. All right. Um, that's it. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll look at my screen. All the one from 19th. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, I, I've been helped some more by listening to the conversation and so I'm still leaning toward this is confusion. This has no weight. It's giving false expectations for those who may even take time to know about this, 
Because when you're in a drug state of mind, this is not going to be on your mind, okay? Know that for sure. It's not going to be on their mind. And no one involved with the situation after the fact, and this is the problem that we have now, and that's why I talked about people being involved in situations set up to protect people. After the fact, it gets, it gets very hard to change the circumstances. Very, very hard. And so what I like about this, bringing this to the forefront is, that we need to take this, send a strong resolution to the state, because that's where we need the law changed. And we need to use this just like we did when we wanted police control and all the other things, and just wear it out in the public so everybody is on board with this. We can get the attention. We can get all the support that we need for it, and it will force the people in the state level to do something. Because Absolutely. right now, we can pass this, yep. but at the end of the day, it really doesn't help. It, that is absolutely right. So, oh, oh, yeah. woman, do you want? I'm sorry. To, um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself. As okay. Usual. All right. Okay. I'm talking to myself as usual. So, I want to just put that out there to think about it, because if if someone believes this and is wanting to rely on this in that situation, and the state decides that they want to put charges on them, they, they could come back and, for us. And I don't want to be in that position. I'd rather be, have something that's solid, that's going to work for the entire state, and not be in a situation where we're going to be overruled most times anyway. So, um, but I like the attention to this. I like what it means, and I'd like to see us be stronger with it in a different format. All right, That's you. me talking again. Thank you. All the one from the first. Mr. President, members of the board, I think that what happens is sometimes people do not realize we have a couple of systems going on already. We have a local, we got a state, we have a federal. We've seen this been in, enacted on a federal level and that many of the states have now legalized marijuana. And our president said, okay, we're not going to start prosecuting you. We're going to leave this alone. So the states have led even though the federal law still says it's illegal. This is what this bill is attempting to do. Sometimes you have to lead from local to make fe uh, state and federal listen to you. And in fact, we actually have two different sets of laws. We have a local law about drugs. Uh, this bill does not attempt to change state law, nor could it change state law. Okay, what it attempts to do is to address what we have on our books and to say we encourage the officers not to use this law, that we want them to have the uh, wherewithal not to use this. That does not prevent the circuit attorney or the officers, it never could prevent them from taking and charging you with a state law, because that still could happen. Just like in Colorado and all the places that they have legalized marijuana, if President Obama wants to tomorrow, he could send the feds to go after them. But he does not, and he said he's not going to do it, and I think that was a smart thing to do. I think that is the same thing that this is doing. Right now, if you look at 11.61.020 uh, of our code, not the state code, and 11.61030 and, 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 um, 11 11.61040, these are the things that she is addressing in her, uh, the one from the 20th is addressing in her bill, and she's not trying to change the state law. And again, um, if you practiced any at all, you would know people always have had the opportunity when you're doing certain things to charge you locally, state, and if you're doing it on certain levels, the federal feds can come in. So no law can over su supersede the other, but you can address your own laws and ordinances. And this specifically addresses our ordinance. Now, even if the officer arrests, um, what that uh, uh, tells the circuit attorney to do, uh, the person who, and they, in the circuit attorney's office, they have a place when you get arrested, they take you in there and decide what to do. They can say, well, well according to the new uh, ordinances from the city of St. Louis, we will not charge you under the uh, municipal code or the uh, St. Louis code, but they still could charge you under the state code or something like that. So she's not attempting to change anything. That the board bill does not attempt to change anything state or federal. It is just addressing our very 
own ordinances. And um, it really brought up a, a, a bad memory for me. When we were in high school, some of the young people who uh, I went to high school with, it wasn't about drugs, but there were some people who used to have this gaming and they, uh, they gambled. And so two of the young men decided to, who, they knew they had a lot of money and they decided to rob them. And one of the men had a gun and shot one of the people that, uh, this is right before our graduation, um, and he shot one of the men. And just like with the drugs, my friend, my other friend, drove him around because he was scared to take him to the hospital, and he died, okay? And it's unnecessarily. And of course, when people are, uh, you say, well, when they're under drugs and whatever, they aren't thinking about that, but they are. They are scared so that you don't know what to do. You're scared, I'm gonna get in trouble. You're scared, uh-oh, I'm gonna get arrested. And so it's the same reason that we do, we've now made a safe zone for people to, to turn babies in because people were leaving babies uh, just anywhere. So we're making safe zones to say, even if you were part of what was a criminal act, if you do this to make sure people don't die, you take a step forward to, to look out for people, that's what this is doing. And it's doing it on a local level, not state or federal. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All the one from the, from the 20th, you recognize the close. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I, um, in closing, I would like to again reiterate that we have a, we have a heroin epidemic in this city. We had 133 people die from overdoses alone last year. It is incumbent upon us, this legislative body, to do what we can to try and minimize the sheer number of deaths that we have in the city due to overdoses. We know to, the, to, to one of the questions as to whether or not this will actually do anything. The purpose of this bill is to encourage people to call 911 and to seek medical assistance in the time of a medical emergency drug overdose. We know that eight, 70 to 80 percent of users are using with other people and almost always victims of overdose are found alone. Therefore, we know that there is a large opportunity to encourage those people to call 911 in the event. Now this bill is only going to be as good as getting the word out and that is why we have made partnerships with activists and folks helping, uh, uh, helping addicts in the community. Here before us today, Robert Riley of the Missouri Network for Opiate Reform and Recovery is here. Their whole entire network is standing with us to make sure that they get the word out and they reach thousands, thousands of addicts in the city every month. Not only do we have com community partners like that, but we have written this bill in conjunction with our circuit attorney's office, the chief of police, the mayor's office, and many aldermen here before us that represent areas that have drug addiction problems will be helping to get the word out. Because you're right, the bill is only going to be as good as getting the word out. Because when you're experiencing a medical emergency, this is not the first thing on your mind, but the first thing on your mind, you are making a decision, should I call? And whether or not you've been told that you could be granted immunity will be an important piece in the decision to call 911. <clears throat> to the alderman to the 21st point on whether or not this will be applied fairly, this is a very, very good question. And this is something, unfortunately, this body cannot address. However, we, through this bill, as pointed out by the alderman from the 21st, do direct officers that they shall not arrest. And so in the case that this, that this ordinance is not applied correctly, we actually have a civilian oversight board now that can start to address police action of inequality and start to make those shifts and help to address if this isn't, isn't applied equally across every part of the city. Because that is the last thing we want. However, we should not, as a legislative body, be making laws or refusing to make laws because other bodies of our city do not apply them equally. That is, that is frankly not fair for us to do. This bill is a long time in coming. There are 35 states, 35 of the 50 states across the country that have Good Samaritan laws already on the books. And it is absolutely correct that this should be done at the state level. 
but we have seen how the Missouri legislature treats drug addiction issues. We have seen how they treat issues of urban areas across the board. And I don't think we should sit back and wait for the state legislature to take action on this. Under the leadership of Alderman Lida Krusen, we have passed a prescription drug database monitoring system, and that is the city taking action where the state refuses to do so. We also know and evidence from other states that have, pa that have passed similar databasing that heroin, heroin use goes up immediately following a, a database program. And expecting that same here in St. Louis, this is an opportunity for us to actually save lives, to tell addicts through our social, through, through media, through getting the word out, through advocates like Robert Riley and the Missouri Network of Opiate Reform and Recovery, through getting the word out that, hey, listen, we are going to apply immunity in cases where you are helping a victim of a medical emergency overdose. Again, I want to remind everybody that this bill allows police officers and directs them to continue to be tough on drug dealers and people that are distributing large amounts. It does not provide immunity for anybody that has an existing warrant out or the possession of illegal firearms or any large amounts of drugs. So again, I want to remind this body that the point of this bill is to remove the stigma, to remove as much risk as we can in this legislative body for people that are willing to call 911 and help somebody who is experiencing a medical emergency. And with that, I ask that for favorable passing of board bill number 40. All right, thank you. It's been moved by all the one from the 20th and seconded by all the all the one from the 13th that we perfect board bill number 40. I'll know if there's a request for roll call. There's been a request for roll call. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Tyus. Alderwoman Flowers. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Moore. Alderwoman Hubbard. Alderwoman Ingracia. Alderman Coulter. Alderman Conway. Alderman Ortman. Alderman Vollmer. Alderman Villa, Aye. Alderman Onowitz, Aye. Alderwoman Murphy, Aye. Alderwoman Howard, Aye. Alderwoman Green, Aye. Alderwoman Berenger, Aye. Alderman Rohde, Alderman Kennedy, Aye. Alderwoman Davis, Aye. Alderwoman Spencer, Aye. Alderman French, Alderman Boyd, Aye. Alderman Vaccaro, Aye. Alderman Ogilvy, Aye. Alderman Cohn, Alderman Williamson, Aye. Alderman Carter, Aye. Alderman Crewson, Aye. President Reed. Aye. Alderman Cohn. Twenty-six I votes, one no vote, one present. I vote you stay in the motion. All the women from the 20th and perfected board bill number 40. That's the extent of board bills for perfection. Third reading consent. Board bills number one, number 4, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 22, 24, 29, 31, 37, 38, 43, 44, 56, 25, and 9. Alderman for the 18th, you recognize on the motion for the third reading consent calendar. Mr. President, members of the board, I move for adoption of the third reading consent calendar. Moved by the Alderman for the 18th, seconded by the Alderman from the 26th. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Tyus. Alderwoman Flowers, Alderman Bosley, Alderman Moore, Alderwoman Hubbard, Alderwoman Ingracia, 
Alderman Coulter, Alderman Conway, Alderman Ortman, Alderman Vollmer, Alderman Villa, Alderman, Alderman Arnowitz, Alderman Arnowitz, Alderman Murphy, Alderman Howard, Alderman Green, Alderman Berenger, Alderman Rohde, Alderman Kennedy, Alderman Davis, Alderman Spencer, Alderman French, Alderman Boyd, Alderman Vaccaro, Alderman Ogilvy, Alderman Cone, Alderman Williamson, Alderman Carter, Alderman Crewson, President Reed, Aye. Alderman Tice, Alderman Conway, Alderman Spencer, Alderman Boyd, Alderman Cone, Alderman Crewson, 26, I vote. By a vote, you stay in the motion. Alderman from the 18th and third read and finally passed the aforementioned bills. That's the extent of third reading consent. We'll dispense with line item 18, report of enrollment. Report of enrollment. Board bills, board bills 4, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 22, 24, 29, 31, 37, 38, 43, 44, 56, 25, and 19. I'm, I'm sorry, and 9. All other business being suspended, the President shall in open session affix his signature here too to the end that these may become law.
All of them from the 18th, uh, 19th, you recognize on the courtesy resolution count. Mr. President, members of the board, I uh, make a motion to approve the courtesy resolution consent count. Moved by the all of them from the 19th, seconded by the all of them from the 22nd. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Thank Oppose. you. Oppose. Motion carries. That's the extent of courtesy resolutions. First reading of resolutions. Resolution 41, sponsored by Alderwoman Hubbard. The Health and Human Services Committee conduct hearings on the issues concerning Biddle House. Alderwoman from the fifth, you recognize on the first reading of resolution number 41. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that resolution 41 be sent to the Health and Human Services Committee. It's been moved by the Alderwoman from the fifth. Entertain a second on that motion. Seconded by the Alderman from the 22nd. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, please assign resolution number 41 to Health and Human Services. So noted. Resolution number 43, sponsored by Alderwoman Ingracia and Alderwoman Green, calling on the Health and Human Services Committee to hold hearings to discuss the merits and possible development of a subcommittee or standing committee for the St. Louis Board of Aldermen regarding women's and social justice issues, and that the Health and Human Services Committee report its findings and our recommendations to the board. All the one from the six, you recognize on the first reading of resolution number 43. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to have resolution 43 referred to the Health and Human Services Committee. It's been moved by the all the one from the six. I entertain a second on that motion. Second, second by the alderman from the 22nd. Any discussion? All the one from the 19th. Mr. President, members of the board, uh, I rise uh, asking uh, that the topic of this resolution really pertains to the rules committee. I would like okay. to ask that it be moved to rules. Okay. Uh, all the one from the six, there's been a request that this be assigned to Rules Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, it's obviously at your discretion where this goes. Um, I will say that the reason I requested Health and Human Services take this on is the subject matter deals predominantly with human services issues, um, and therefore um, I feel like that committee is best suited to handle the discussion on this topic. All the one. After she's made a motion in a second, you can usually then we have to vote on whether it's been sent to the committee or yeah, not. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm with you. Um, any, fur any further discussion? Any further discussion? Now, you can amend your motion to, you can withdraw your motion to send it to Health and Human Services or amend it to send it to rules. Or if the motion fails, it'll automatically go to rules. But on the original motion? You want to amend the original motion? No, thank you. Okay, so you want to you want to send it to health. Correct. Okay, and not to uh, rules. That's right. Okay. Uh, Alderman from the 18th. Mr. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, member, I'm confused. Now, who who her her motion is to go to health, yes. and I thought the alderman from the 19th made a. Yeah, the, the other one from the 19th made a request that it be sent to rules. And the way we can send it to rule, the way we can send it to rules is if uh, two ways, either the other one from the six amends her original motion to send it to, to rules, or if the other one from the six, if her motion fails, it'll go to the, it'll go to the rules committee. Okay, that, that clarifies it, thank you. Okay. Uh, all the men from the 18th, uh, you still have the floor. Thank you. Um, and and her, the all the men from the 6th, I'm trying to get clarity here. Your reasoning for the health committee. Uh, all the men, would you like to all the men from the 6th to yield for questions? Yes, pardon me. All the men from the 6th, will you yield for questions? I all will. From the 18th. All the men from the 18th, please proceed. Thank you. Will you please re explain again your reason for it going to the health I'm committee? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Your, your reason for it going to the health committee? Uh, the subject matter that uh, is being discussed um, relates to um, a variety of topics that Health and Human Services typically discusses, considering um, homeless, veteran affairs, Office on the Disabled, St. Louis Area Agency on Aging, Youth and Families, and Health and Wellness. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. But it, it also speaks about 
social, it, it would seem to me since we already have one related to racial equity that you might want to consider them together and that's already in the rules and resolutions committee and they might enhance each other by being in the same committee as opposed to separate committees. So that, that's all. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. All the ones from the 19th. Uh, just to clarify the last statement that the alderman from the 18th made, that was my main reason, because when looking at this, I knew that we were already setting up uh, formats for discussion on areas that deal with civil rights, equity, discrimination, uh, racial disparities, uh, wage disparities. And so all of these issues are kind of the same and we're bringing in experts and everything so that we can come to some conclusions and probably there will be some recommendations out of the committee for some very specific types of things to go forward from this Board of Aldermen. And that was why I, I said what I said because uh, it was in line with where we are already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, agreed. Any further, any further discussion? All one from the second. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Will the alderman from the sixth please yield for questions? All the one from the sixth will yield for questions to the all the one from the okay. second. I will. All Thank the one from the second, please proceed. So again, what are the health issues that you want to talk about, discuss in the Health and Human Services Committee? I think that would be, I mean, a lot of the issues are going to be hopefully discussed um, by having the committee members come up with issues that they have, but specifically um, what I had in mind was um, disability rights, um, the pink tax, a variety of um, health issues, health disparities with women, and other social justice issues. Would you be willing to um, possibly exclude the racial, uh, I don't know what the words are in the justice, I mean, because I, I think that's what's kind of holding it up. What okay. you described to me was, you know, you want to talk about women and having sanitary things at work on the job or so forth. I think what's what's going on here is the racial discussions of things that's already in the committee, the rules mm -hmm. committee, is what's kind of getting some folks in a bunch. I don't have a problem with hearing your, your resolution because trust me, there have been resolutions that should have been assigned to the health committee that weren't. So I don't, have I don't have a problem with you having an opportunity to talk about women issues, but I don't know what was discussed in the other committee hearings. And as I made mention to you before, I don't want to start anything here, but I'd be happy to hear the resolution. It is, it is up to the discretion of the president. Thank you. All right. All the way the first. Point of order again. It is up to your discretion, but once there has been a motion and a second, second. We need to vote on it. It is no longer your discretion at that point. Yeah, okay. But and and you're right. We're up. We're just uh, we're in the dis discussion phase of the motion in a second. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, any further discussion? Alderman from the from the 11th. Yep. Thank you, Mr. President. I just made this up, but the uh, Alderman member from the 19th, if she wanted certainly could have put her comments in the form of a substitute motion, which would have been in order. The Absolutely. fact that the uh, lady from the sixth had a, uh, made a motion and seconded it is one thing. Substitute motion is always in order. Absolutely. Uh, and having said that, let me editorialize. If I were the alderman of the 19th and it went to Health and Human Services where the lady suggests, I think they can study the heck out of it. And then if it came to my rules committee, I would really study it, and if you didn't feel that it was worthwhile having a special committee, that would be the very end of it. That's just a solution off the top of my head, which doesn't hold much. Alderman from the left. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Alderman from the 19th, you recognize. Mr. President, members of the board, I'd like to make a substitute motion to have uh, board bill number 43. Uh, heard in the rules committee. It's been moved by the alderman from the 19th. I entertain a second on that motion. Yeah. Seconded by the alderman from the 4th and alderman from the 26th. Any discussion? Any further discussion? It's been moved and seconded by the alderman from the 19th that we assign resolution number 43 to rules and engrossments. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Tyus? No. Alderwoman Flowers? Yeah. Alderman Bosley? Yeah. Alderman Moore? 
Alderwoman Hubbard, Alderwoman Ingracia, Alderman, she said no, Alderman Coulter, Alderman Conway, Alderman Ortman, Alderman Vollmer, Alderman Villa, Alderman Arnowitz, Alderman Murphy, Alderman Howard, Alderman Green, Alderman Berenger, Alderman Rohde, Alderman Kennedy, Alderman Davis, Alderman Spencer, Alderman French, Alderman Boyd, Alderman Vaccaro, Alderman Ogilvy, Alderman Cohn, Alderman Williamson, Alderman Carter, Alderman Crewson, President Reed, Aye. Alderman Flout. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Conway. Alderman Spencer. Alderman Spencer. Alderman Spencer. Alderman Vaccaro. Alderman Cohn. Alderman Crewson. Eleven I votes, thirteen no votes, two present. By a vote, you fail to stay in the motion on all the women from the 19th. So we're back to the motion for the all the women from the 6th. Yes, please be here. We send, I renew my motion. It's been, okay, it's been <laughs> motion that we send resolution number 43 to Health and Human Services. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. That's the extent of first reading of resolution. Second reading. Following resolution was reported out of the Parks Committee, Resolution 34, sponsored by Alderman Ortman, Parks and Environmental Matters Committee, pursuant to Ordinance 64994, does hereby approve the recommendations of the Director for the Appropriation of the Neighborhood Parks Capital Improvement Account Fund for fiscal year 2017. All the from the ninth, you recognize on the first, second reading on resolution number 34. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, and actually, I'm going to be speaking about 34, 35, and 36. Um, I'm giving a report that these resolutions came out of committee. So, okay. um, and resolution 34 is a one tenth cent tax that we're getting uh, about one point two plus million dollars on. Resolution 35 is a 3 16th cent tax um, that we're getting about almost 649,000. And then we have the neighborhood parks fund that is 1.2 million dollars, a total of about three million dollars. All the exhibits are with the resolution. Uh, and then committee, uh, Dan Skillman, the parks commissioner, reported that every alderman that put in uh, you know, for a park for funds got addressed. So uh, it's been a long time in coming since I've been here that we finally have enough money to cover a lot of the projects that need to be done on the uh, smaller parks. So it's, it's good news. We're going to have about $3 million put into our small parks spread across the whole city this year. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 
The following resolutions were reported out of the Parks Committee. Resolution 35, sponsored by Alderman Ortman, the Parks and Environmental Matters Committee pursuant to Ordinance 69372 does hereby approve the recommendations of the Director for the Appropriation of Neighborhood Parks Capital Improvement Account Funds for fiscal year 2017, and also Resolution 36, sponsored by Alderman Ortman, the Parks and Environmental Matters Committee pursuant to Ordinance 67477 does hereby approve the recommendations of the Director for the appropriation of Neighborhood Parks Capital Improvement Account funds for fiscal year 2017. That's the extent of second reading of resolutions. Ms. Lyons, unfinished business. We have none. Announcements. The Personnel and Administration Committee will be meeting immediately following the full board meeting today in the leisure room. Immediately following the full board meeting and the meeting will be closed to the public under provisions of section 610.021 of the Missouri Revised Statutes in order to permit the members of the committee to discuss personnel matters. Monday, June the 6th, Ways and Means Committee meeting at 9 a.m. in the leisure room. Wednesday, June 8th, Ways and Means Committee meeting at 8.30 a.m. in the Leisure Room. Also on Wednesday, Legislation Committee meeting at 11 a.m. in the Kennedy Room. Friday, Full Board meeting, 10 a.m. in the Chambers. That's the extent of my announcement. Any further announcements? All the one from the second. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. I'd like to hold a Health and Human Services meeting June 6th at 10 a.m. to hear Resolution 41, please. All right, please make note of that. So noted. Alderman from the fourth. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. A legislator, one of you aldermen, one of my colleagues borrowed a photo album of the uh, New Year's Eve ball in City Hall that we had a while back. I would like to get that book back so I can get it reprinted and get other pictures. So whoever borrowed that book, if you know someone that borrowed that book from me, please bring the book back. Thank you. All right, thank you. Alderman from the 24th. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to wish the Filoni's restaurant family a happy 100th birthday. Uh, the restaurant has been at the same location on Manchester Avenue, uh, owned by the same family uh, for for a century now, which is uh, kind of incredible, and they're still going strong. Uh, go tell them hello sometime soon. Thank you. Right, thank you. Hello, I'm from the 20th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to uh, announce that this Saturday, tomorrow, we are reopening the Marquette Pool for the summer. Uh, for those of you who have never been, the Marquette Pool is the largest free public pool in the entire city of St. Louis. It's located in the lovely Dutchtown neighborhood, which we may recognize as being one of our top 15 neighborhoods for crime in the city. In fact, Dutchtown has had more person crimes than any other city in the city of St. Louis to date this year. But the park there, to come out and support the park and the neighborhood would be a great opportunity tomorrow starting at noon. The health department will be there giving out free health screenings and we'll also have free gun locks. So coming out tomorrow to Marquette Pool, noon to four. All right, thank you. Alderman from the seventh. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, this weekend's the 47th annual Lafayette Square Spring Home and Garden Tour. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, tickets are 20 bucks in advance, $25 at the door. Come on down to Lafayette Square and see some of the beautiful homes and gardens. Thank you. All the one from the first. Mr. President, members of the board, uh, this past weekend, which was a holiday weekend, I keep doing this, we had a meeting over at Mark Twain neighborhood. And uh, first of all, I want to just give a shout out. That's a new neighborhood that I've been representing. The other parts of the neighborhood are the old 20th. And uh, so many people came. We almost had to just move the meeting. But one of the people who came was Mr. Herschel Parks. Mr. Herschel Parks turned 97 on March, I mean, I'm sorry, on May 31st. And he's still out there active and caring about his neighborhood. So I want to give a special shout out to Mr. Herschel Parks and to wish him a happy 97th birthday. It was so wonderful uh, to see people like that still caring about their neighborhood, still coming out, still be, being viable people in the neighborhoods. And I would say to young people, look at people like this. 
these people have carried the ball for a very long time. So when you're asking about what's going on, how, why don't things happen, it's because the average age at the meeting was probably 55 and above. Young people, you got to get involved. You can't, I, I'm all for the protest, Black Lives Matter, but when we have meetings and we send out mail notices and you don't come to anything and then you're upset. There's some order. Please proceed on. Then you're upset because you're not included. It's because you're not coming to the very things that the seniors are coming to. And so they get to direct policy because you're not be, um, being involved. And again, I want to just say happy birthday to uh, Mr. Hersher Parks and to thank him for coming out and to wish him a happy 97th birthday. Any further announcements? Any further announcements? Any further announcements? Alderman from the 18th, you recognize on the motion to excuse. Motion to excuse. President, members of the board, I move that the Alderman from the 25th be excused for necessary absence. Been moved by the Alderman from the 18th, seconded by the Alderman from the 22nd. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Alderman from the 18th, you recognize on the motion to adjourn. Mr. President, members of the board, I move that the board adjourns until Friday, June 10th, 10 a.m. Moved by the Alderman from the 18th, entertain a second on the motion. I think seconded by the Alderman from the 3rd. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Stand adjourned. <laughs>